Like many of you, I'm just a simple Rockstar fan. A Rockstar fan who is excited for GTA 6. And unfortunately, if you're a GTA 6 fan, well, you haven't been hearing much of anything from Rockstar. That's right, since GTA 6's trailer 1 came out last year, we haven't received anything. Essentially, for these past 9 months, there's been no pulse on the GTA 6 hype train. Oh, but last week we had a pulse. We thought we finally got some information. Unfortunately, it was looking like a delay. Twitter user Liam, guy I guess who works for GTA Base, I guess they're a GTA 6 news company, made a post saying pretty much that GTA 6 had been delayed to early to middle of 2026, claimed that he had some sources that gave him this information and essentially had the scoop on it. And we all believed it. I mean, it's Rockstar. They delay games. It's what they do. Red Dead Redemption 2 had a delay. GTA 5 had a delay. It happens, you know, and, and one of the people who also bought into it was Michael from Legacy Killer HD. And he's a pretty big YouTuber, talks about gaming news, covers a lot of Rockstar news as well. And so he was also stating that, hey, yeah, this is believable. Then when Jason Schreier, who's known to be in deep with a lot of these video game companies. He knows people who works at Rockstar. Pretty reliable source when it comes to all kinds of leaks and general information about video game stuff. Uh, he came back and said that uh, it's not true. According to him, he talked to six employees and they all said uh, cap. They said that was a, uh, they said that's cap. And you know, as rational people on the internet tend to do, they fucking berated Liam with death threats. Um, really classy shit. And of course, uh, Legacy Kale HD got his fair uh, share of backlash. Again, I kind of talked about this already in a previous video if you want to check it out but i didn't go in too deep on the drama side of it and i won't do that here either i don't really care to cover the drama side of it what i'm here to talk about is an interesting string of posts that legacy kill hd talked about uh he talks about how he's kind of done posting on gta 6 stuff and like how he's kind of fed up with all the backlash he was getting you know due to the delay rumor shenanigans and for whatever reason he decides to kind of spill the beans a little bit about like what he knows about gta 6 nothing like spoilery really i, I guess kind of but he doesn't go into too much um, detail about anything there's one specific one one that I wanted to take a look at that I don't feel like too many people are talking about and that is that a lot of the intro was already leaked on reddit and it was leaked by a prominent community member that passed it off as speculation and I thought okay that's really interesting but again I just want to go ahead and take the time here to say hey this is all speculation for one uh, legacy kill HD could have got bad information from his source I mean we saw Liam also get bad information from his source that didn't pan out so that could be one thing another thing is that when it comes to developing games so much changes I'm sure the prologue could have changed uh, Another thing is that post could have been deleted. You know, potentially the person who made that post might have saw this post and was like, oh shit, uh, you know, people are going to be piling through you know, trying to scope out what this leaked intro is. So like, let me delete it so I don't potentially lose my job or, you know, whatever kind of relationship they have with Rockstar. He states here specifically that it was leaked by a prominent community member. I'm not really on social media like that. I don't, I don't follow Reddit like that. Besides the occasional here and there searching stuff, I really don't stay on Reddit. So I wouldn't know who's a prominent community member. Uh, same with Twitter. I'm not really on Twitter other than to follow like a couple people just when it comes to GTA news and like a few of the games that I like to follow. I'm not really online like that. But I did want to kind of dig into it and just kind of look around and see what I could find but we're going to start a pretty light we're dipping our toes very light into this one here they talk about how the intro might be the Hank's waffle robbery scene we saw with the 2022 leaks if you saw that footage which I'm sure a lot of people have essentially you see Lucia in the diner robbing the place they're talking about here about how that potentially could be the intro and I feel like that's a pretty good guess that's a pretty solid guess I mean GTA 5 started out with a bank heist in North Yankton I feel like you know robbing a diner I think it would make sense thematically I think it would make sense in terms of you know a tutorial teaching people how to rob people getting away from the cops that kind of stuff i think it really sets it up for that so i could see that being true for sure uh this one they talk about lucia in prison it talks about how the first trailer he got the feeling that lucia is the primary protagonist that was something also mentioned in legacy kill hd's uh post it talks about how lucia is the central character similar to how michael was to five so i feel like a lot of people are feeling that way he says here he's, she's the first of the two that we'll play as again i think that makes a lot of sense uh the trailer showed lucia in prison rockstar wouldn't want to spoil that she gets locked up later on in the game so he's thinking that's what takes place early on in the game shortly after the intro where they do like a robbery and she gets caught her trial her sentencing uh and she spends a couple years in prison uh before the parole hearing maybe essentially that scene we see in the beginning where she's you know what are you doing here lucia is like uh, lucky uh, uh what did you say uh bad luck or something like you know, bad luck i guess so here they talk about how post prologue the game starts with lucia is still in prison uh would act like the first mission in the tutorial uh new gameplay mechanics hand-to-hand -hand combat uh dialogue they talk about inventory system which i think is interesting too because a lot of people are speculating that red dead redemption 2 is going to play a big influence on gta 6 and obviously red dead redemption had like the inventory system and the inventory played a bigger role than prior rockstar games before so i thought that was interesting uh there'll be limited free roam inside 
inside the prison, optional objectives, and I don't know, does Rockstar really do optional objectives? I'm trying to like think back, it's like, I don't really remember too many optional objectives. I don't know, I could be wrong about that. It also talks about her corrupt parole officer, uh, and again, that was another thing that Legacy Killer HD talked about was there was corrupt cops and police chiefs, so again, that's not like a, a completely unique idea, so it's not like, oh, they called it, but they're cliches, right? They're used they use a lot in a lot of different mediums so it doesn't really mean anything but i thought it was interesting though talks about criminal connections that could be made in prison makes sense that happens in real life people go to prison you know they make friends with other criminals and you know do business with them as someone who watches a lot of youtubers who went to prison like that shit that shit's real that happens uh they talk about lucia being on parole for sure that's like that's very likely as you know she has the ankle monitor uh and people are also speculating maybe the parole is a way to limit you to certain parts of the map like in prior gta's red Dead redemption 2 did it with the sniper that would just fucking drill you as soon as you stepped into um black water and we have another one here uh and he talks about what if the prologue is the bonnie and clyde story he also mentions the leak 22 footage talks about the the diner scene where we see lucia running around the diner that they're robbing he talks about how that's essentially gonna be the tutorial he talks about how jason schreier kind of leaked the bonnie and clyde information already he said he doesn't think the whole game is going to be about running from the law and he doesn't think that gta 6 is going to be a story about like working your way up similar into a gta 5 where franklin was you know working his way up from living with his auntie to like having his own a nice house in the hills of los santos so he's saying like he doesn't really see that fitting in the story of gta 6 it's kind of hard to picture right now what the actual story of gta 6 is going to play out like you know it kind of it often starts out as like a very small scale thing and then it like you know rolls into some grandiose adventure kind of like in gta 5 how we started out with you know smaller bank robbers and stuff like that sure but they quickly evolved into this elaborate heist where you're stealing from the government and government agencies and you know, all kinds of crazy shit so it can get pretty wacky pretty quick uh, he talks about what if uh, GTA 6 will have a similar prologue uh, to Red Dead Redemption 2 pretty much stating that it might be a longer prologue I think that's one notorious thing about Red Dead Redemption 2 is like when you want to start a new game uh, is you really can't skip that prologue and it's pretty lengthy it takes a couple hours and there's going to be a cold open similar to GTA 5 it talks about like NPC interaction threatening or tying up hostages something we've seen in Red Dead Redemption uh, we saw that in Red Dead Redemption 2 being able to like hogtie people so that'd be really cool if we saw that in GTA 6 and they talk about hurricanes I, I I have heard that hurricanes and like extreme weather was one thing that was planned for the game but it was cut very early on we don't know for sure if that's true obviously speculation he states that lucy is the one that's making it clear that they can't do this forever they have to get out of this life and it looks like in this one robbery he's stating that one of their hostages is the son of a drug cartel boss uh which it sounds very gta like it's like you know they commit a crime uh oh that crime has you know bigger implications you fucked with the wrong people cartel boss is very powerful and he has control over the police and politicians which goes back to the corrupt cops and police chiefs so they end up kidnapping the cartel boss's son doesn't seem like a fucking good idea and that seems like what sets everything in emotion thing that sounds cool it sounds like a really solid idea this one takes the approach of jason and lucia don't know each other prior to gta 6 uh, the game starts with lucia in prison he talks about there's an initial cutscene that explains why she got there after she talks to the parole officer she gets released from prison with an ankle monitor which this person talks about how this is going to limit her movement around the map again something i i, I agree with i think that's the approach they're going to take when she gets home home uh, she's greeted with a welcome party and that's where she first meets jason and then it, from here it says before the party we switched to jason a few hours earlier meet some of his friends we get some backstory about him uh and he talks about how he should wear something nice so for me i'm kind of getting the vibe of more like a, a romance <laughs> this, this strikes me more like a romance a novel or a movie or something like that I'm not saying it's not possible but this is not really screaming gta protagonist intro type of you know thing to me and for our last speculation slash leak slash thing uh we have the most interesting one in my opinion where where we have someone talking about how they did q a testing for red dead redemption 2 and gta 6. they were play testers for red dead redemption 2. he also talks about how red dead redemption 2 was sort of a test mule for gta 6 and speculating aside i actually think that is true i think rockstar wanted to test out some more complicated or you know more different features with red dead redemption 2. you know red dead is very popular but not as popular as you know their gta series so you know i feel like they knew they could take more risks with Red Dead Redemption and you know toy with different mechanics and see what people like see what people didn't like he reiterates that Red 
Dead Redemption 2's engine is the precursor to GTA 6, and yeah, that makes sense. Some buzzwords are mentioned, uh, volumetric clouds, pushing open world genre to its limits. Uh, he talks about how it was a privilege for him to be able to play the game, even as unfinished as it was. Not everything was completely done, but a lot of it was, you know, there. Uh, the map was huge, but he says uh, stupendously huge, which I think is funny. He says it makes GTA 5 look like a schoolyard playground. Sizes and everything, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he talks about there's an array of atmospheric effects, uh, light pollution, hurricane winds, morning fog. He specifically talks about Carcer City, which is, uh, I guess, an East Coast area based on Boston. I think Carcer City is a city from Manhunt, but I, I could be wrong. I'd have to fact check that. I'll, I'll verify that in post. Uh, he says he spent more time in Carcer City. He said he found it to be the more interesting city. He says there's satire surrounding the historic landmarks. Again, Rockstar, there's going to be a lot of satire. He says a lot of it got a laugh out of him. Uh, he fast traveled via Blue Line train, which took him to the airport area. Uh, he said there's a lot of towns, there's shanties, there's waterfronts, there's suburbs, there's hideouts, there's a lot of wilderness, which again, this game is based off Florida, so there's going to be a lot of wilderness. Uh, there was a military base in the Florida region. He got to steal a jet. He did a couple flyovers, but he didn't get to essentially cover the entire map on foot. He talks about the variety of the map. There's farmland, there's red oak forests, uh, freeways, uh, marshy grasslands. There's the swamp that Florida is known for, similar to the bayou from Red Dead Redemption 2. But he also specifies that it's, you know, still very much an unfinished state that he plays this game. He talks about the small chunks of islands based on the Florida Keys. He says it's dubbed the chain. Unfortunately, he didn't get to play any mini games or story missions. He says he doesn't even think the character he controlled was an actual protagonist. He says he looked like a generic NPC model. There was no voice lines, just an avatar he used to explore the world. He does specify that he knows that multiple protagonists are a thing, but he says two of them might be siblings, which is interesting. I wonder if somebody from Rockstar told him that to kind of throw him off. He says one of them is an undercover cop. That's pretty big. A lot of people are speculating that Jason is an undercover cop. It was covered in the map pad theory, but I don't know. It's interesting. That's that's an interesting point. Uh, he says the groundwork for mission design has been completely revamped. You can permanently abandon missions. Uh, you can take different routes that will you know end up with a different consequence. Uh, each protagonist can manufacture their own story beats, but overall the story is going to play out the same way. So it's still pretty much linear. Kind of reminds me of the early Telltale games where you kind of get a lot of illusion of choice. Cool nonetheless, something definitely different for the GTA series. He says there's lots of newly modeled cars, which we saw that in the first trailer. At the end, he talks about how he's really not sure what Rockstar's ultimate vision is with the game. He says mechanically, it's still very much a GTA game, but the technology is a beast. And he uses that word beast, which is, you know, that's, that makes me excited. I don't know how that makes you feel. Talks about how the police had very uh, robust and tactical AI. The police would break up into different teams and try to flank you. Again, that's very exciting as in past GTAs, they would just kind of run at you, you know, one at a time. And his final impressions essentially were, it feels like Rockstar's ultimate game. The game's big, realistic, talks about how you can't wait to see how the game's going to turn out. I wonder if he knew back in 2019 that he would still be waiting to this day. <laughs> but yeah, guys, that was just a little video going over some speculation. But what do you guys think? Have you guys come across any interesting linked information? How do you think the prologue is going to be for GTA 6? Leave a comment. Let me know. Leave a like if you like the video. Subscribe. We're on the road to 1K. If you like my content and you're looking for more, why don't you click on this video here? One thing every GTA is best known for. Or how about you click on this video here where I talk about GTA 6 and everybody's unrealistic expectations. Peace.